Okay, on to public comments. Uh, first one is establishment of an independent citizen review board. The first speaker is Barbara Messner. After Ms. Messner is Lindsay Nathaniel. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, independent citizen review. Um, nothing is independent when council appoints people and council spends millions of dollars. I'm still waiting on the FOIA on the bond referendum, on national TV, et cetera. Um, a lot of it is total misinformation. The people were scammed just like a car dealership scam. Y'all are so happy that you con the people um, using their money. Okay, like I said, all these appointments, you don't even allow us to know the names so we can speak, and you don't allow us to speak any longer. We're allowed to speak for like a month. Um, including the May 31st Commission. The victim families have asked to be in charge of this and to be on the, on the uh, commission. You've spent a fortune of VB Strong money for moving people around the city, special, uh, all types of things. But there's, and not one of you, not one of you, attended uh, the first or second anniversary. So um, I think it's wonderful that you do the social things uh, for different people, but you know, you haven't taken care of these people. Thank you. The next speaker is Lindsay Nathaniel. After Miss Nathaniel is Melissa Lucasson. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Mayor Dyer and council members. My name is Lindsay Nathaniel. I'm a resident of Virginia Beach and the city gun violence lead for Moms Demand Action and also a member of SAFE, which is Stand and Advocate for Equity. I come today to speak in support of the Independent Citizens Review Board that was unanimously recommended by the task force that you appointed. Recently, Virginia Beach has been in the spotlight nationwide for its toxic leadership. To quote Pharrell Williams, I love my city, but for far too long, it has been run by and with toxic energy. That came after the narrative changed several times around the homicide of his cousin, Donovan Lynch, who was killed by Virginia Beach police. Curbing the toxicity requires confronting America's history of racism, reimagining the role of police, and implementing policies that reduce police gun violence. A key component to detox Virginia Beach and restore public trust is through passing an ordinance fully resourcing an independent citizens review board. In order to move forward, we need accountability, not the same old, same old. We need an independent citizens review board with subpoena power. Virginia Beach currently has a review focus board, the Investigation Review Panel, which was created in 1991, two years after clashes between police and thousands of college students at Greek Fest. Butch Bracknell, who chaired the panel for two years, called it a token gesture with no real power to hold the police department accountable, per a Virginia pilot article. At a time when people are demanding a complete rethink of policing, we need to increase accountability for the bad apples while preserving the benefits that police on a whole provide to our community. If empowered, the Independent Citizens Review Board can look not only at individual instances of police misconduct, but at local policing patterns and practices with a wide lens and help build back community trust with accountability that we so desperately need. The Independent Citizens Review Board is an important piece to enhancing public trust and ensuring that organizations designed to serve and protect do so equitably. The time is long overdue to pass the unanimous recommendation of the task force that our elected Virginia Beach City Council members commissioned. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Melissa Lucasson. After Ms. Lucasson is Pat Gudzinski. Welcome. My name is Melissa Lucasson. 
uh, and I'm here to ask you to vote to pass an ordinance fully resourcing an independent citizen review board with all of the authorities and the unanimous recommendation of the appointed task force. I hope the hesitant members of City Council will vote to replace the current IRP with the new ICRB. Seriously taking advisement from the very talented group of volunteers on that task force that spent 795 man hours crafting the framework you have received. There are 800,000 sworn police officers in the United States. At any given year, approximately 2,000 officers have been arrested for some crime or another. That's a small percentage. But other than politicians, how many criminals do we need to have paid by the taxpayers? Police are paid with our money. They're trained by our government. They're given military equipment. They're given protections that even after they violate our rights, they're not investigated because it's their colleagues tasked to do the investigating. They aren't prosecuted because it's their friend in the Commonwealth Attorney's Office who makes that decision. The few officers that are prosecuted are often acquitted by judge or jury. If you sue them civilly, the case gets thrown out because of qualified immunity. Uh, there are very few situations for a citizen to have their rights vindicated when the government violates them, especially when the person violating them is wearing a badge. Qualified immunity costs taxpayers millions of dollars in civil settlements paid by cities and police departments. That is not an effective method of accountability. A critic of police practices and procedures is not an opponent of, or enemy of police. I am not anti-police. I am anti-police brutality and corruption. I want all of you to understand that I speak from a place of passion because I believe passion persuades. Growing up as the daughter of a police officer, I pushed the boundaries. When my father complained about my frequent interactions with the police well into adulthood, I lovingly remind him that I was an observant, I was an observant child and he taught me everything I know. Um, I'm a, I am an assertive, defensive driver that likes to get where I'm going and my very first personalized license plate said two lead feet. Thanks to my dad, I have a good sense of humor uh, and a wee bit of entitlement. Um, at one point, I was on the DMV's driver improvement program after racking up a pretty impressive negative point balance. I was threatened with revocation if I kept pretending to be Danica Patrick racing around town. Do you know what wasn't threatened? My life. Donovan Lynch didn't know that his life was going to end on March 26th. The officer that shot him didn't know that his life would drastically change that night either. Conflicting witness accounts and not a shred of video evidence from police or bystanders does nothing but continue to erode the trust in police. The city is on the edge of a precipice almost over the edge. The loss of something in the the loss of something in the Water Music Festival was another blow to the confidence in city leadership. The disappointment is reverberating through this city, and it seems appropriate to ask that you vote to pass the new ICRB as a gesture to rebuild trust. The calls are growing louder Thank you very much. and soon will be deafening. Appreciate you can't quash the voices that want to be heard. The next speaker is Pat Kaczynski and then Susan Lowsberg. Good evening. Good evening, council members and Mayor Dyer. I am a 27-year resident, voter, and taxpayer in Virginia Beach, and I'm here to voice my strong support for public safety and the quality of life for my family and others in Virginia Beach. I am here to support the task force recommendation for the Independent Citizens Review Panel. The fact that the members of the board, each one selected by an elected city council member and from differing backgrounds, unanimously support going forward with this important initiative is a powerful statement about its benefit and practicability. I am also a volunteer with Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. Our organization's mission is to end gun violence in all its forms. No one here can underestimate the gravity and massive effort necessary to achieve this goal. As I spend more time learning, advocating, and listening to the stories of those we wish to support, it is clear that every step we take to move positively forward with community relationships and partnerships is crucial. Moms Demand Action seeks sensible and reasoned solutions to support our mission. One of our most valuable lessons has been to understand and elevate the experience and expertise of members of the community who are directly affected by violence. They are the experts who know the needs of their neighbors and families. They want to be safe. As a movement, we recognize the necessity of our city leadership and law enforcement in working the, with these grassroots community advocacy groups to combine efforts to address the root cause of increasing gun violence here in our city. 
the positive adoption of the resolution to form an independent citizens review panel who unanimously support its establishment is a keystone in bettering cooperation and understanding between those who live day to day with the hardship and consequences of violence and those in law enforcement who strive to be their protectors. The independent CRP, which includes those who represent the diversity and interests of our city, is an exemplary and necessary opportunity to provide transparency, accountability, and a foundation for trust between our city leadership, law enforcement, and those who work to make their communities safe for their families. Confidence and communication are vital to mutual understanding and respect. I urge you to consider each of your trusted representatives' advice carefully and make the Citizens Review Panel a reality. This is a hopeful and certain step in achieving our mutual goal to make our city safer for all. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Appreciate it. The next speaker is Susan Lowsberg and then Mike Hashemi. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, Mayor Dyer and City Council members. I am a resident of Virginia Beach and I'm also a local co-lead of Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. I would like to thank all of you, all of you elected city council members who approved a citizens review board task force and each of you for having appointed a member of that task force. I am here today to support the unanimous recommendations for an independent citizens review board by the task force and ask you all to support the recommendations as well. I don't think anyone would argue that police presence in our community isn't vital. I know I have relied on their protections like so many of you, but I also believe most of us agree that their presence is not perfect. There are some police officers who are, as they say, bad apples, but there are also some who have not been trained well or come with their own preconceived notions that may get in the way of good policing. Additionally, I think we can all agree, and data supports this, that communities of color are more har harmed by bad policing than white communities. And, that, and this harm can range from discourteous behavior to behavior that results in avoidable injury and death to members of our community. Our present investigative review pa uh, panel is just simply not effective. There is no meaningful oversight. For an ICRB to be a meaningful tool to keep the police accountable and serve the community, it must have the following components. Investigative powers, including subpoena power, transparency, independence, meaningful disciplinary power, budget, and scope of investigations. Civilian oversight boards can be effective at, ho at, effective at holding police accountable and reducing instances of the unnecessary use of force. Effective ICRBs hold the promise of enhancing public safety and renewing public trust in police, especially within black and brown communities. To succeed, civilian oversight boards need resources and authority to maintain accurate data and foster relationships with city officials and community members and to do so equitably. Above all, they must operate independently of police departments themselves. With the recent police shooting of Donovan Lynch and events that resulted from that shooting, our city has been thrust into the national spotlight and not, as we all know, in a good way. We need to restore public trust, especially within our communities of color. Again, I ask you, each of you who were elected by the citizens of our great city and who each appointed one member of the CRB task force to accept their unanimous recommendations and vote to create an independent citizens review board using the recommended guidelines, following these recommendations with the intent to avoid barriers that have historically limited the effectiveness of police investigations will power this body to look not only at individual instances of police misconduct, but at local policing patterns and practices and affect real change and save lives. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Mike Hashemi. After Mr. Hashemi is Gary McCollum. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to uh, express my support for this panel, and I'd like to uh, hope that not only does it address our issues with the police department, um, the chief, and other people who work for the police, um, are following orders not only from the chief but also from the deputy and um, sheriff's department and deputies um, have a role in this and I hope that this panel looks at the issues that we might have regarding that uh, whether it's the Commonwealth attorney and the sheriff's department having a familiar relationship what could lead to issues and corruption 
whether it's uh, slandering a candidate that's running against the sheriff, whether it's voter intimidation by deputies that are now sitting on city council. I think we need to make sure that we look into these, not only the police officers that are in blue, but the ones that are also in beige. Thank you. The next speaker is Gary McCollum. After Mr. McCollum is Jay Boone. Good evening. Mr. Mayor, members of council, first let me thank you for uh, appointing the task force uh, to Mr. Montero, who's in the audience, uh, for his leadership. Uh, I stand here this morning or this evening uh, as president and founder of Do the Right Thing, saying that we are in support of this recommendation. But at the same time, uh, it's apparent that there are things in this recommendation that really doesn't go far enough. I think it's a great first step, and let me highlight a couple. Um, first off, um, there still is a question that remains whether or not this new ICRB will truly be independent. Will it actually uh, root out police overreach, misconduct, and in some cases, brutality and fatalities, which we've had in the past? Uh, while again, there's some good things coming out of the task force recommendations, I would encourage city council to unanimously support this recommendation and implement this recommendation immediately. But let me talk quickly about three things that I think we still need to do. First off, is this again truly an independent body? This organization will report to the city manager after a lengthy internal investigation uh, by uh, police internal affairs. Uh, this, is that really independence? Uh, the board coordinator is also chosen by the city manager and not by the board. Again, you selected this board, so why, or you would select the board, why would you not let the board pick the coordinator? Again, the board is also subject to the city council budget, and so again, will this be a priority of this council? We've had other uh, issues around, particularly the Minority Business Council and other places where you had the authority, but you didn't give it priority within the budget. Secondly, uh, there are simply too many bureaucratic hoops that this board will have to jump through in order for a subpoena to happen. And I'll just give you one. The fact that you have to have a supermajority to actually go to that place makes it nearly impossible for that to happen, and I'm sure you are aware of that. Um, make it a simple majority of the board. You would appoint them, trust them to do their jobs. Thirdly, uh, the lack of disciplinary power. Can the ICRB uh, do anything other than just simply make recommendations? It's not clear. They can, they can uh, concur with police findings, but what if they action against a, a guilty officer? Uh, what if they don't, the city doesn't recommend any uh, disciplinary action? Can the ICRB really do anything other than simply recommend policy changes? So again, we are for this, but we think it's a great first step. We think those three items that we've highlighted clearly need to be addressed, and we hope you will do that in the future. Virginia Beach is the largest city in the Commonwealth. Let's act like it and let's lead. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Jay Boone. I may not see Ms. Boone in the audience. Uh, Brad Belton. Oh, I'm sorry, here's Ms. Boone. Um, Mr. Belton, if you'll just hold, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, thank you for finally bringing this to the table. It's an important issue that we've been um, waiting for um, some answers to. I feel like I am a bit worried. Uh, I feel like the drag out has been just to kind of you know, gaslight or rather push us at bay until you decide no, yes, whatever the case may be. But um, I just hope that if you do make a decision um, negatively towards the citizen review panel, that you uh, at least tell us why um, you owed it no. Um, and then also uh, just explain what we would need to do so that we can get it passed. Because again, um, the community is in fear for their lives. Um, and I don't think that it's right that, you know, you're supposed to represent everyone in the community. Uh, and if the community has come to you countless times and asked for change, uh, then if nothing's getting done about it, then I just, it's very obvious that you're silencing um, those people and those voices. Uh, you know, it's very important that we have accountability 
and even the police chief has said that his officers want to, um, you know, have body cams and be accountable and that this council is, as well has said those same things. Um, but it's just about actually putting, you know, work behind that. And that, that citizen review panel, even though I wish that we did have more people, activists, um, organizations that were in the area on there, the people that you did elect actually put together a very good packet um, for you guys to look over. And, um, you know, these people were also voted by you all here. So I just feel like any more talk about it seems um, just a waste of time um, and energy when we can actually just be putting action behind what we've already set into motion. Um, we waited all summer for a plan of action. And now that we have one, and now it's almost 2022 and we still have nothing. Uh, and it's very sad. And at the end of the day, the shooting that happened on March 26, um, someone has to be accountable for that. Outside of the homicide aspect of that, there should be someone, there's a reason we don't have any footage, right? Those cameras by Axon are supposed to ignite as soon as one officer is on the scene and all the other officers' body cams are supposed to go off as well. There were three incidences that night where everybody's, all the police, all the, what is it, station two, should have been activated. There's no footage of that. There's no body, there's no um, camera footage. There's nothing. So it's either the police officer that was on the first scene are responsible. It's either the police chief for not making sure that the machines work. It's either Axon for not um, providing actual working equipment, or it's this council for not, again, making sure that the police force have proper equipment when they're interacting with the community. But again, accountability needs to be had, and it's even past the day-to-day -day things. Thank really you. Really appreciate you coming. The next speaker is Brad Belton. After Mr. Belton is Andrew Jackson. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Brad Belton. Um, excuse me for a little nervous. But I am here in favor of the Citizen Review Board. I've heard all of the other people speak on the good things and then the flaws that are in this thing. As a citizen of Virginia Beach and also an employee of the city of Virginia Beach, I don't feel safe. And I am ex-security in this city. I have over 20 years serving this city. Tenth cleanest city in the United States. Largest resort city on the planet but we have so much of a gap. Nobody is taking this seriously. I'm not saying y'all not, but there's a problem that needs to be addressed. Pharrell said cancer culture. It's a dangerous culture. <clears throat> I need y'all as a employee who've elected some of y'all to take us seriously. The police needs to have this oversight over them. And they need to not only have an oversight, they need to be able to discipline these officers when they break the laws. They should be able to put aside qualified immunity. That's the only way all of the citizens of this great city is gonna feel protected and also more importantly, be included and taken seriously in this city because we all are part of this great city and this nation. We sink together or we rise together. <clears throat> All it takes is for evil to prosper is for good people to do nothing. I don't see no bad people up here. Let's make this happen. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Andrew Jackson. After Mr. Jackson will be Carl Wright. Good evening. Good evening. Good afternoon. Somebody leave this? It's for the presentation. Oh, that's for me. <laughs> let me let me say first that I appreciate the appointment of a special task force. Most of you up here know I've been trying for a year to put a program in front of you. What this task force did in six weeks, I took two and a half years to do. I knew what they, was, what they were doing. I visited one of their sessions. I understand what they have to do, but I understand that there's a group that has to do this. And the last time I heard anything about a review panel, 
It wasn't good. See that? I got three pages of this. You know what this is? This is over the last 20 years, police shootings. I've been here for a while. I've investigated, I think, Mayor, you know I investigated one here recently. I'm working on two more. I shouldn't have to do that on my own. I'm a good investigator. 15 years criminal defense. I can investigate. I can find a rock when you hide it in the sand. That shouldn't be necessary. There are some issues. But we are not alone. You can look at the news. You can look at it across this country. You go to, in, you go to international review boards of, of, of law enforcement. They're looking at this country. It's a shame when we can say in a period, period of a, just a few years, 15,000 police shootings in this country. 15,000 from 2011 to now, every year there's been a thou at least 1,000 with the exception of one year. They only had 900 and something. They had 27 days out of 365 there was no police shootings. 27 days. We have a problem. We need this review board. I agree with it. I think there's some things that need to be done. And I have a plan that I've been working on two and a half years. It's probably got most of what they have because they followed what I already did. But understand, it's not going to, we're just going to select somebody and they go do what they do. There's, a, there's probably three to six months worth of training, at least. And there's got to be a diverse unit, a diverse group. I would like to thank Ms. Wooten for that push. That's a little extra push. That I guess that's what got this re, this uh, group together, task force. Yeah, I've seen some. Not heard your name in the neighborhoods. I know you've been working. I'm out there. I understand what's going on. Two o'clock in the morning, you might find me talking to somebody in Lake Edwards or over in College Park. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do your job, folks. Ah. Thank I'd, you. I'd appreciate a response too to my communication. The next speaker is Carl Wright. And then, Mayor, members of council, we will then go to the WebEx speakers. Okay. Welcome, Carl. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council people, Mr. Branch. Welcome back again. Um, it's not much I can more I can say. People have spoken. You know, uh, I hope we're listening. I hope you all are listening. The people have spoken. And I want to thank folks. I feel really proud tonight because I'm going to be honest with you, Ms. Henley. I used to come down here. I didn't feel very welcome when Georgia and I used to come down here. And I want to say tonight I feel better now with the cross-reference of folks coming out saying the right thing, doing the right thing. I feel really rejuvenated. I feel really charged tonight because I remember I used to come down here and I was look at some of you guys and I felt like I wasn't even supposed to be here. Now tonight I feel like I'm supposed to be here. We need to move forward on this citizen review board. The people have already spoken. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. We've, we've been down the road. We've been here. We've been in all these different committees. We've done all these different things. I think Brother uh, McCollum said something, he, some things that he was concerned with, some things I'm concerned with. We know we need subpoena power. We know we need investigative power. We know, I mean, I, you know, I like the, the, the city manager too, but I don't think it's fair to drop it on his, de on his, on his desk and then blame him when things don't go right. If it's truly independent, John, let it be truly independent. Let's not, let's, I, I trust these folks. I trust the city to a certain point. If we're gonna do it right, let's do it right and let's be fair and honest about it. I know some of you all don't feel comfortable with that, but we gotta get over those things. You know, we got, we're gonna, the police is gonna be here whether we have a citizen review board or not. Just because we're similar, a strong citizen review, review board to do the right thing, that doesn't mean it's going to counsel our police department. You don't have to worry about going to food line and somebody robbing you and not being able to call the police. No, that ain't going to happen. The police will be here. They're not going anywhere. I'm kind of concerned for some of our folks that's not here that represent myself. Now, I don't like that. I like my folks to be at the table if you represent me. 
and that's just my, my take on it. Uh, we need to do the right thing. This citizen review board need, it should have been here, but I'm glad, you know, we went through all the uh, rigmarole and different African-American com uh, committee and the different committees, Mr. Mayor. Now we need to get down to the nitty gritty and get it in place. I want to thank those of you that carried the water for this thing, because I can tell you when I first started coming up here, that won't happen now. That, <laughs> that was not happening. So I want to say to you all that I actually carried the water Thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's get it done tonight. With that said, if there's no questions, I'm going back and sit down and wait for you all to do the right thing. Thank you all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll now begin our WebEx speakers. Sarah Clark, Ms. Clark, if you would just pause two to three seconds before beginning, you are unmuted. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Sarah Clark. I am a longtime resident of Virginia Beach, and I'm here to voice my support for fully implementing the Independent Citizen Review Board as unanimously recommended by the task force. I believe this is a key step toward rebuilding public trust and ensuring equitable public safety. Thank you. Next speaker via WebEx is Holly Edwards. I do not believe she is online, so we'll go to the next, which is Dr. Veronica Coleman. And I'm being told she's not online either. Um, Suzanne Solitz, if you would please pause two to three seconds before beginning. Thank you. You are unmuted. Good evening, council members. My name is Suzanne Soltysiak, and I am a resident of Virginia Beach. I'm also a member of Stand and Advocate for Equity. I strongly support following the unanimous recommendations of the task force that you, our elected representatives, selected to review this issue. I have to admit, I was initially concerned about the makeup of the task force, particularly the amount of appointees that had worked within law enforcement and legal professions that were appointed to a task force that was specifically about citizen representation and oversight. While I agree there, it's important for their representation to be there, it is even more of an imperative for citizens to be represented in the policing of our community. So I have to say, I was a little surprised when the task force came back with the unanimous recommendations for so many things I believe are a good start for our community. But to me, that they came back with that unanimous recommendation speaks even louder to the need for implementation. I just have to say that one word again, unanimous, that so many who are or were in the justice apparatus to see that same need for oversight and transparency speaks volumes. One thing that is dear to my heart is democracy. As we all know, you are representatives of the people. Just as the police force, the justice apparatus, they are all of and for the people. I would never say they work for me as I've heard some say about public employees and servants. That's disrespectful and not quite how this works. But they are empowered and sanctioned by the votes of citizens, as are most of you. As such, the citizens deserve a role in how such an impactful part of our community government operates and oversight into how other citizens in positions of authority and power utilize that power. That is the very core and foundation of our government. And the relationship between our policing and our community, it is fractured. When there is such fracture and distrust and lack of transparency between, a people, between people in a position of authority or power and so many of that community that it is representing, this is when it becomes important nay vital to bring the community into that structure. It is important for transparency, for relationships, for community, and for democracy. We've had a national spotlight shined on our community and the way that policing and justice happens within it. It has shown that fracture and lack of trust. And now with that spotlight still shining on, you have a task force that has given you their unanimous recommendations for how to begin healing and helping to restore that relationship, trust, and transparency. How can you not? I implore you to vote to implement these recommendations as a start with immediacy and no further delays. We need equitable solutions so that we can begin to ensure that all of our citizens are a part of this process. We need healing and a place for voices that haven't been a part of this process to be heard. We need to begin to detox Virginia Beach. Speaker is Erica Scaife. If you would pause two to three seconds before beginning, you are unmuted, ma'am. Good evening, council members. 
My name is Erica Scaife, and I'm a citizen of Virginia Beach. I wanted to just take a minute tonight to share my support for the recommendations of the task force for the Independent Citizen Review Board. The, this task force made unanimous decisions, recommendations. We must have the citizen oversight in order to restore transparency and trust with the community. A police department is a key public safety organization, but it is most effective at doing what doing that when it's transparent and responsive to the community it serves. Every member on the panel that you selected is advising you that this is an important step toward increasing transparency and responsiveness and toward creating equity. I'm asking that you vote to support all of the recommendations of the task force. Thank you. Mayor, that's all the speakers. And thank you all who spoke for your input. Thank you all very much. Very valuable. Thank you.